Of all the things I've done in my history of building computers, I think putting an SSD in my system was probably one of the best things in the long run. Obviously upgrading your other components, your processor, your GPU, etc. does make a big difference in terms of gaming and just general performance, but an SSD is quite frankly one of the most noticeable on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, of course, if you're watching this video, this is probably not news to you. You're either considering buying an SSD and you're trying to decide what you want to invest your money in and how much money you want to invest it in, or you're just watching this like myself, where I just kind of binge watch stupid tech videos on YouTube. Either way, if you're still running on a spinning hard drive for your boot disk, at the very least, I would highly recommend upgrading to some form of solid state drive, as this makes a massive improvement in boot times, program launching, everything. Obviously, if you know anything about computers and memory, you know that obviously flash memory is going to be significantly faster than a traditional spinning hard drive, and while I still have a couple spinning hard drives for mass storage in my PC behind me. I mainly use SSDs for my operating system and all of my games and programs that I use regularly. Now about six years ago when I initially moved from using a hard drive to an SSD for my boot disk, I was working a pretty shitty job to be honest, where I didn't make a ton of money, so my biggest concern was saving the most money and getting that speed performance boost without spending a ton of cash because obviously I didn't have a ton to spend. So of course I went around looking for some of the best budget SSDs and whatnot. And as you know, SSDs can get extremely expensive on the higher end, especially when you start going for the more reputable brands and the higher capacities within those brands. So of course me being the cheap motherfucker that I am, I decided to go for the cheapest option I could find, which at the time was a 120 gigabyte SanDisk SSD, which I currently actually have being used as my boot drive in my laptop, but that was what I ended up putting my OS on in a couple games since obviously your OS takes up a fair bit space and I didn't really have much room left over to put anything else on there. Of course the initial reaction to that was, holy hell, this thing boots so damn quick. And I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm honestly very impressed with that tiny little SSD. I think I got it for around $50. But moving from a physical spinning hard drive to solid state memory was one of the best things that I've done in my history of building computers. But without further ado, because apparently I take a long time to get to the point, we're just gonna dive into the topic of today's video, which is, is it really worth spending a ton of extra money on an SSD? Does it really give you that much better performance spending, say, $200 plus on an SSD versus one that's something like $80, which are the two that I'm going to be comparing in this video? And I understand this is not a perfect comparison because these drives don't have exactly the same capacity and all that stuff, but there is a drive in the SanDisk line that actually does sort of fall almost in parity with the Sans Samsung one that I'm going to be comparing it to. But the two that I'm going to be comparing are a Samsung 850 EVO 500GB drive and a SanDisk SSD Plus 240GB drive. The Samsung drive runs about $200 right now at Micro Center, and the SanDisk drive runs about $85. Obviously, there is a bit of a space difference compared to the two, because obviously one of them is half the size of the other. But to make the comparison a bit more um, understandable or realistic, there is a SanDisk 480 gig drive that runs $130 at Micro Center currently, so that's about you know, $70 less than the Samsung drive. And yes, it is 20 gigabytes less, but that's something typically you won't really notice all that much. So first and foremost, I wanna say, even with the oldest SSD I have from SanDisk, it has never caused any problems for me. It hasn't failed. It doesn't throw any er errors or weird things like that. I've actually only ever had one SSD die on me and that was an OCC drive which failed within the first like six months of owning it. That's what I used to have in my laptop. So personally, I haven't ever bought another OCZ SSD, even though that was probably a fluke. I just haven't bothered. But regardless of that, these SanDisk drives, despite their very low price point, have never caused any issues for me. As for this Samsung drive, I've only had it for probably two, three months now. Initially, I had it running in my laptop, but after some moving things around and reconfiguring my PC, I decided to put it in my desktop, since that's primarily what I use. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna be running some basic tests, which I'll overlay over me talking and showing off some performance metrics 
using a program called Crystal Disk Mark. If you've never heard of that, you can go ahead and Google it. It's a free disk benchmarking utility, works with SSDs, hard drives, everything for the most part. You can even run it on flash drives if you really want to. So it basically just runs a few simple read write tests. I'm not entirely sure what goes into those tests. I'm not some expert on read write speeds and stuff like that, but I am pretty good at, you know, putting them side by side and comparing the two and seeing, oh, this one has a bigger number than that one. So basically after running these tests, I had it set to the default settings where it runs each test five times on each drive. So you can kind of get the best like average or whatever across both drives. So you're not just getting like one fluky result from one drive or the other. Both of these are SATA six gigabit drives and they're both plugged into six gigabit ports on my motherboard. So they should in theory not have any sort of bottlenecks there other than, you know, SATA not being super fast. And ultimately both of them came very close to each other in terms of rewrite performance. The Samsung one being slightly higher capacity and not even slightly, being double the capacity and being almost double the price, probably well more than double the price, ended up coming out on top on average for about 20 megabytes per second faster reads and slightly faster in certain write tests as well. Again, there were some results that didn't entirely make sense, but I'll be throwing those up over this so you can take a look at those yourself. But ultimately, to conclude this video, I just wanted to throw this out there and say, despite that there are some technologies within the Samsung SSDs that perhaps the SanDisk ones don't have, a lot of which I don't actually utilize, and the Samsung ones do have better warranties, like longer warranties and stuff like that on them, and honestly, their construction feels a lot better as well. They have like full metal housing versus the plastic one on these SanDisk drives. The price premium that you pay for them for very marginally improved performance and all of those features that you may or may not use. Again, you can go to Samsung's site and look at their 850 Evo drives to see entire lists of all the technologies and stuff that go into these. But from a raw price performance standpoint, the SanDisk drives are absolutely fantastic and I would recommend them hands down. If you're just looking to upgrade from a mechanical hard drive to a solid state drive to get that faster boot, to get faster load times in games, to get faster launching of programs and stuff like that, or even uses like a cheap scratch disk for Adobe Premiere or video editing, whatever the case may be, the SanDisk drives are fantastic. Again, I've never had a single one fail on me. The 128 gig one that I'm using still is technically past its recommended lifespan or so, and it's had, it's had tons of power on hours, and I have never had a single issue with it. Granted, it could be coming to the end of its lifespan, and it might just fail outright on me one day, but up until this point, I haven't had a single issue with any of the SanDisk drives I've purchased. Of course, the Samsung one has also been fantastic. But again, if you're looking for a cheap upgrade to improve your speed, the speed of your mass storage per se, then SanDisk drives are fantastic. Of course, if you want to spend a bit more money, you can get those Samsung ones, which are, you know, like the premium kind. If you, if you really want to look at it that way, they're the premium of SSDs. They've got a bunch of other fancy technologies in there that I haven't personally utilized all that much. But for those of you who like that kind of stuff, it's in there, but it does carry a hefty price tag. As far as read and write performance though, between the two drives, it's pretty much negligible. Of course, if you really, really want super fast speeds, you've got to go up to M.2 because SATA, again, is limited to six gigabit per second. But again, as far as price is concerned, 2.5 inch drives are gonna be significantly cheaper than M.2, especially at higher capacities. And I have no issue recommending these SanDisk drives. There are tons of different uh, variations and sizes available. I, again, I typically buy all my stuff at Micro Center since they somehow managed to cut the prices down quite a bit, but these SanDisk drives are also significantly cheaper online or like at Fry's Electronics or wherever you might need to buy these. So again, if you're looking to make the jump from physical spinning storage to solid state storage, they are they can't be beat for the price they're absolutely fantastic. They're easily the cheapest SSDs I have ever seen on the market. Now, of course, brands like OCZ and uh, Toshiba and I think Seagate is starting to make SSDs as well. Those all kind of come pretty close in price as well, but they are still a bit more expensive. So the SanDisk ones are fantastic. And without reiterating myself a little too, too many times before anyone gets triggered, is, is it worth buying the super, super expensive SSDs? No, not really. I mean, unless there's some feature that you want 
from that SSD, then no, it is not. As long as you read up reviews on whatever brand you're purchasing, or you know for a fact that there isn't, it's not missing some sort of technology that you absolutely need, then going for the cheaper option is typically pretty good. The SanDisk ones also do have a warranty, so if it does fail within a certain time period, you can, you know, get it replaced and whatnot. And of course, for that massive price cut, you get still fantastic performance that is only slightly worse, and very slightly, let me add, not noticeably worse. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll leave a link in, or well, links in the description to both of these drives that I tested in this video so you guys can go and check them out, look at their specific specifications on microcenter.com. Obviously, microcenter isn't available everywhere, so if you want to order them somewhere else, you're free to do so, but they have all the SKUs and stuff on there so you can look them up for yourself and find the exact ones that I was talking about in this video. But anyways, let me know what you guys thought about this in the comments down below. Have you had any sort of big issues with either SanDisk or budget SSDs in general? Like, like I said, I have had cheap SSDs fail in the past. Um, actually, I technically have had two. I had an M.2 one that failed and I had a 2.5 inch one from OCZ that failed. But of course, let me know your experiences with this in the comments. Perhaps there is something I have totally glossed over in this video that is very, very relevant to uh, the whole budget argument. Perhaps there is something really fantastic that you get with the Samsung drive that you don't get with the sand 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 that you don't get with the sand disk ones that I just completely missed out on and I just failed to mention. If I did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it. Maybe make an updated version to this video if that is the case. And of course, if you found this video helpful, slap a like on it. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.